Okay, let's talk about breaking into the zone on the power play. Thinking about it, there's basically three ways we want to do this, but it all involves one puck carrier and no passing. There's three methods. We're going to talk about just having somebody carry it in, have a hard rim around the boards, and then we're going to have just a soft dump on net. So the first thing we'd want to try is to just try to get in the zone on our own with the puck carrier carrying it in. So this is best when we're thinking about the, the D's kind of already sagging into their penalty kill here, kind of square or whatever they're going to use. So as soon as you hit the blue line, we're talking just go for it, right? No moves, no lateral things, no drop passes. So that way we can time this, the rest of the forwards and then the D can time this entry too so that when you hit the blue line, they're off to the races too. Okay? Now this is the easiest way. And then once we're in, we've got, you know, passes here. We can go around. We can get the point. It all depends on how much pressure the puck carrier attracts. If he can get across the blue line, so let's draw that up again. So we've got, you know, our forwards kind of waiting here because he's going to pick up the puck on the other side of the red line. And this is for a team that's maybe being a little more conservative. So they're already sagged in. They're not even going to give him any real pressure up at the blue line. If you can get in the zone without having to make any, you know, extra effort, then just get into the zone. Um... We don't need to see this and then think, okay, well, he's open too. Let's pass it across. Let's just get in, worry about setting up after that. So the next clip is going to be a good example of when it's best to carry, and it will show a good example of. So. Trevor's got the puck out here. Let's play this out a little bit. Okay, so we're going to get better at the timing of this as we start to realize that this is what we're going to start doing more of. Um, because at this point we have, I believe that's Kevin over there, and we have Andrew here, Johan, and then me who needs to get up there but we should be hitting the line with Trevor. So now you can see that in this case, they're not waiting for us already. They've already got, uh, they've got two guys on the blue line, but they've got this huge gap here. And then we've already left one guy in the dust, another guy in the dust. So this is also good if they've been shorthanded and then they've like counterattacked or they've got a guy that got left low. Let's play it forward a little more. Okay, so he gets the blue line. That's the most important thing. Now we're in the zone, and now you can make your move or do whatever. Um, so we've got three forwards in the zone. Okay, so, you know, if we can get to the net, great. That's what we want to do. So he's carried the puck in, and now he's got past whatever resistance that, that was. Okay, so now we're in. So... Usually you won't get around the D and turn him around that much, but if we get a shot like that on the power play, sure, go for it. Um, otherwise, normally, if this guy can, you know, if this guy can skate with our puck carrier a little bit, or maybe we're on the backhand, so say Trevor's left-handed here and he's, you know, his stick is over here, if that's a hockey stick. Well... Then we can, now we've got, see, one, two, three guys all kind of drifting this direction. Obviously a little more because they think he's going to shoot. So this is why we hit the blue line. So now we can keep going around and we've got this side open. Um, when we hit over here, we've got the point open and then all things can open up over there. And then we'll have our center taking stage over here. So... Yeah, this is why this is our best choice if we can carry it in and get the blue line without getting off sides or turning it over. All right, so we got a good shot on that. Um, and now the rebound is kicked out. And look, we've got 
Remember how all four of their guys were basically in the neutral zone? And now we got that shot. We've got him here. One, two. They're almost all below the dots. So that leaves our point ready. And, you know, once we get it back up to the point, we have a little bit of extra time to get set up and start passing around. Okay, the second best option would be a hard rim around the board. So we're talking same setup as we do with the puck, you know, the, the carry in kind of thing. So now we've got our puck carry up here. He's got a head of steam, but this would be best when they're trying to kind of meet you at, at the blue line a little bit and put a little bit of, you know, a wall up at the blue line. And so, remember, we don't really want to mess around with trying to deke a guy or make some sideways pass, especially later in the game when that pass can get fumbled, and then they're off to the races, right? They're, they can pick up any turnover. So if we don't have a clean carry into the zone, so this guy's going to meet us here, you kind of want to come around, start angling this way a little bit, and you want to just give that big hard shot around the boards so that this guy and this other D-man are now our guys picking up the puck. So I, you know, if they're pressuring up in this direction, up in this direction, or if they're staring at the puck carrier, they're exposed for this. They're going to leave this side, you know, they, they don't need to cover this until the puck gets there. So if we can get a good hard pass, probably around the boards, not the glass and mess with that, but just get it in, and then so we've got our winger and then our D, and so we can get set up on this side, and then all the while that's happening, all these guys now hit um, hit the zone, and we can try to get set up that way. The benefit of that is if we do a hard rim this way, that gives, so if we're over here, that gives this guy, their closest D-man, is going to have to turn around. And then the extra time that it takes around here is going to give our guys an extra step to win the race to that puck on the boards. Or at least get the stick tied up or whatever, and then maybe we can pick it up on the D. So that's the next best option would be if that puck carrier gets met with any sort of resistance at the line, dump it hard. And so I'll show you a real good clip of that right now. Okay, so here we've got Connolly. He's coming up with the puck, puck carrier. Right? So now he's come up here, and same thing. They're just all, this time they're sitting back and ready for us, right? So 11 is meeting Sean at the blue line here. And so, you know, I. this is where... We want to be able to watch what's going on here. So we've got Sean over here. That's Kevin over there. Uh, that's Johan and then Gerald. So we want to hit that blue line. So we're going to read that Sean's going to dump hard around the net. See how number nine is basically, number nine is 10 feet from Gerald. So when that puck comes around down into this area, he's got to turn all the way around to go meet him. Well, Gerald's, Gerald knows what's going to happen, right? So he can read that Sean's going to dump that hard. So he's going to go and beat him to that puck. And then we've got a point man here. We can come in around here. Then Sean's going to come come in. Johan would come in. So this is where, you know, see how high up on the blue line they are. This is where getting a, a good hard rim sh around the, uh, a good hard rim around the boards would, would really help. Okay, so right there, you can see he had to just kind of swing around here. Gerald's got the inside line here. And once we pick that puck up, if we can pick it up clean, we're good to go. So you can already see the spacing. See how everyone kind of flocks together? We've got two guys over here. They're playing this okay, but we've got two guys with Gerald. So we can go up the boards. We can go hard back around. And then go right back up to Sean and, and Sean over there. So there's options there. 
But the key is, once again, we're in the zone and we don't have any pressure on us, right? We haven't turned it over up high. We're ready to try to get set up. So that's what we want to do. And that's the next best option is if you get any pressure meeting you at the blue line, any resistance, just throw that thing hard around the boards. The final option we'd want to really talk about is putting it on net. Um, ideally, we'd want to put it softly on net. So let's just say here, we got our puck carrier. And this would actually be best if, say, you're coming down and maybe a guy is changing. So we're not hitting the blue line with full strength. Any rim would be just, it would just rim right back out of the zone. We don't want that. And then maybe they're going to pressure you up here. So, um, you know, we're waiting for our guys to get in. We could, we could loop around and hit back again when we get back to full strength. Or you can hit the blue line and just flick a little slow shot onto the goalie. Something that that is soft is going to be a, a rebound that's not going to go back out into these D for an easy clear. Something that gives us time, almost like a punt, right? And then we've got our coverage team charging the net, and maybe we can just get a face-off out of it. Now, yeah, this is the option that would be the least offensively uh, helpful for us. But if we need a change, um, and our D especially will be able to read that, if we've just had a tough go getting into the zone, just get it to the goalie, something that he can handle, force him to freeze the puck, or just some sort of rebound we can really crash hard. And let's just get a face off. And we're really good at setting up when we win a face off, and we win a lot of face offs. So this isn't the worst option. And just so just keep in mind these three options. So let's look at a good dump on net and what results from that. Okay, last one we've got Eric Ferguson here. Same thing, he's the puck carrier as a D man. We've got one, two, right? We've got Eric is here, Gerald. Kevin, Schaff, I can't see that far ahead. But anyway, so he's hitting the line. And once again, we're all in this line. And here they are, one, two, three, up high again. So in this case, this is a good decision to dump it on net. A, we've already gotten scored on on this five-minute power play. We haven't got anything set up. You know, we're struggling against this, this pressure. So best option would be to try to get a face off in the zone. So he's going to hit the zone. So he's got one, two, three guys all just kind of staring him down. Carrying is out of the picture. Uh, he's not really angled for a hard rim. And this guy is so close to the boards, he's going to win that battle. He's already turned this way. So I don't know if he read that or not. But if you can read that, we're not going to really win that race. Just chip this on net. And then you can watch what he does really well as he follows the shot hard. So you can see that's not, you know, it's just a shot right in the gut. But he's able to turn these two guys around because they're facing him. So he's on track. And so any sort of rebound he can kind of get into. And then we've got two guys in some sort of area. But the most important thing is it was a shot that either wouldn't get dropped or would just be a soft rebound. And that's where we can start getting uh, freezes and easy rebounds. So then he comes in and gets... The draw okay so those are the three choices we have going forward number one is we want to get it back to a strong puck carrier to carry into the zone somebody who's going to just get ahead of steam come in hard along the you know one side of the boards make a good decision coming in hit the blue line with steam or without the puck you know get it deep we don't want any danglers we don't want any cross ice passes we don't especially when any turnovers, we just need the puck in and then let's get to work. All right.